Our project was over John Wilkes Booth. As most of you know, he was the one who killed Lincoln. All right, so basically he was born on May 10th in 1838. He, it was near Bel Air in Maryland. Um, with him, he had very little education. He had like natural talent, so when he was acting, he was fine. But he was in different schools all around, but he just didn't really show off that often. He was very athletic and very talented from a young age. So ever since he was little, he was running around. He was being really active, and then obviously he had his father's talent of acting. But um, the problem that kind of picked up as he grew up, he had emotional instability and egocentricity, which when you think about it, those two things are the um, kind of telltale signs of a serial killer nowadays. So just kind of keep that in mind as you grab this part of the Okay, so his father was um, Junius Brutus Booth, and his mother was Mary Ann Holmes. Um, Mary was actually Booth's um, mistress, so it wasn't what? actually his wife. What was it? Yeah. Oh no! Um, he was, he was, you guys keep the comments down. He was the ninth of ten, ten children. Um, he grew up in a prosperous slave-owning family. Um, like Sydney said, he went to multiple schools. Um, Julius Junius <coughs> died when uh, John was 14 years old. Um, so he had like a very unstable family life overall because he wasn't close to any of his um, siblings either. And he was always jealous of his older brother Edwin because jo John wanted to follow in his brother, brother's footsteps, but he was al always overshadowed by his brother Edwin. All right, for his acting career, he began his acting career when he was 17. He uh, traveled with a Shakespearean stock company uh, in Richmond, Virginia in 1859. Uh, widely noticed uh, on the tour of the Deep South in 1860. And then he had a lead role in Richard III in 1862. Okay, so um, during his uh, tour, he had his tour cut short because he caught a respiratory illness in 1863, which um, made it so he couldn't act any longer. So um, basically what happened was he became an, he was a very um, Southern person. He supported slavery, he was anti-Lincoln. He thought that um, slavery should be available in all states. So he became entwined in a conspiracy to kidnap Abraham Lincoln and hold him for ransom to either um, win the war for them, or at the very least, to um, free some of the captured Confederate soldiers. But the conspiracy ended up failing because Lincoln did not show up as their intelligence showed him, told, said that he would. And this, because of Booth's instability, he became really enraged by this. So he decided to take it a step further. <laughs> No, um, this is, um, this is um, our John Booth, was it? that was John Booth, and one of the things that he did when he was in his tours, when he was doing his acting, is he was a giant advocate for slavery, so he would always go to anybody he knew and he'd talk to them, hey, slavery's awesome, hey, slavery's awesome, hey, slavery's awesome. He would do, he would stand up and he would talk to people and he would tell people about how horrible Abraham Lincoln was. He detested Abraham Lincoln so much, and you'll see that later on. I'm just a man with a dream, an American man with a dream, to Abraham to go Lincoln. to Europe. Oh, wow. There's John. Oh, what I would do to go to Europe. Why, it has been my dream to go to Europe. No, no, somebody can. He shot Lincoln. No. Police weren't out there. <laughs> okay, well, as they're going, um, obviously, what you just witnessed there was the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. Granted, that's 
not the real thing. We all kind of know that. No, it's the real um, thing. We filmed that at the Garrett Theater. And when we did that, um, we talked to Bruce Babbitt. He's the owner, and he let us in there. The lighting in there was perfect for it. And as you saw, the video was blurry. We did that effect so it would give it kind of the older feel. Because back then, obviously, they didn't have a video of it. They had a few pictures. They had drawings of it. But we blurred out the video a little bit just to make it kind of feel a little better. And then I thought we chose that music because we felt that we needed to put something there. OK. So, the assassination happened on April 14, 1865. Booth, that morning, morning slash afternoon, he found out that Abraham Lincoln was going to a play of Our American Cousin at Ford's Theater. And he gathered all of his allies and said, hey, look, we're going to do this. We're going to kill the president. When he got there, um, he had already performed at the theater before, so he knew the layout of the building. He knew where the president would be. So he, um, earlier on during the day, he went in and he tampered with the door so he could close it from the inside so it couldn't open up. And then he had left, and he returned at 10 p.m. that night. And that's when he um, slipped inside. He shot Lincoln with a 44 caliber, caliber Derringer. And then he hopped over the side, and it said that he broke his left leg, but there's also th theories that since he got up so quickly he started running, that he only fractured his ankle, and that he had broken his leg after a horse had fallen on him afterwards. There's no true, like, which happened where. But either way, he sustained an injury and had to be treated for it. A little fun fact for you guys, when he jumped off the balcony, he said, Six Semper Tyrannus, and that means thus always to tyrants. And that line was said by Brutus when he stabbed Julius Caesar. And it's kind of interesting because his father's middle name was Brutus. So, can I get your mind going with that? Okay, so these two pictures are um, just little pictures of the assassination. The right one is him shooting Lincoln, and then the left one is um, after he jumped off the balcony and was running away. Um, our American, uh, our American Cousin was uh, written by Tom Taylor in 1852. It's about a man who meets his English relatives when he goes to the UK to collect an inheritance. And um, when Lincoln was shot, when Lincoln was shot, um, the assassin knew the play inside and out. He knew what the funniest line would be. And that's when he had shot Lincoln because he wanted to mask the sound. Because Lincoln was laughing when he was shot. He, he didn't even know. He was unconscious before he realized what he didn't know. But um, the line that was said was, not accustomed to the manners of good society, eh? Well, I guess I, I know enough to turn you inside out, old woman. Um, I have to say that. You damn old sock dog sock man trap. That was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was the funniest line of the play. And um, that's when Lincoln sustained his injury. All right, so in the aftermath of the assassination, uh, Booth was actually, he had two associates that helped him. David Harold helped him to escape. He was waiting outside with a horse so that they could get away quickly because troops were already on their way to kill him. Uh, they, for 12 days, they ran hid in houses of uh, Confederate symp uh, sympathizers and also citizens that were unaware of him murdering the president since we didn't have TV back then, so it wouldn't be able to be like, spread around that easily. Um, he was found on April 26 by Union soldiers. Um, he was found in Garrett's barn, and the way they got him out of there is that they actually burned down the entire barn. They just went to this guy's house and just burned down the entire barn to get him out. He was shot uh, by a Union soldier that went by the name of Thomas P. Corbett, and he died from his wounds later that evening. And there's also a theory that he could have possibly killed himself. But... Alright. Okay. That is the uh, barrier that he used. Um, he definitely thought it out because that pistol is really small if you have ever seen one in person. It is really concealable. Even like nowadays, it would be easy to conceal that for assassination. Don't get any ideas. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> it's, a, it's a single shot pistol. It's usually not that accurate because the barrel isn't that long, but it's also, he kind of sneaked up on Lincoln. And then on this, 
uh, David, they actually spelled his name wrong on the actual document that they had for the wanted posters. And back then, uh, $100,000 was a lot of money. And actually, we were reading up on this, and John Booth was kind of upset that the bail, his um, like price, if he was caught, he was upset that it wasn't higher. Like he thought it should have been higher, so that's kind of funny. <clears throat> so, um, John Wilkes Booth was a Confederate. And he really did not like Lincoln at all, um, being a Confederate. He was just against everything. He basically was against everything that um, Lincoln was for. Um, he, he really hated abolitionists being a Confederate, wanting slavery. Um, and then he joined the Not Knowing Party, um, which the Not Knowing par Party was some, uh, it was a party who didn't want, they just wanted to get rid of all immigration. The no nothing. It was the no nothing. The no nothing. Same as not knowing. Yeah, my bad. You're all right. <laughs> um, socially, he created sympathizers um, within the North and South, um, like people that could sympathize with this cause. Um, and he was a uh, Pretty well known actor, and um, uh, not to mention he was pretty good looking, you know, for his age. He, he, he literally was considered like the Brad Pitt of his day because um, he was very well. Yeah. Um, like Sidney said earlier, um, he was very smart, but he didn't want to show up to his classes ever. Um, and part of that was because of how busy his family was, but he also really didn't want to. Um, be committed to anything. Um, and he, when he planned out his assassination, he had planned out everything very well and pulled it off perfectly to how he planned it. Okay, so maybe it's U.S. history. Um, back then, when Lincoln died, it literally shook the core of the country. Because if you think about it, the president's dead, and this is one of the first true assassinations of America in general. And they didn't really know what to do. And as Claxton brought up earlier, do we still have that divide now? Because they were kind of divided back then. Um, they brought the country together over it after a while, because after they got over the pain and the grief, they realized that they needed to be stronger. It kind of strengthens the idea of when something really bad happens that human nature just tends to bring them back together to stand against it. Um, now, um, there's a man named William Seward, and he was the Secretary of State back when Lincoln was the president, and then Andrew Jackson was the, not Andrew Jackson, but, um, Vice President, but the Vice President and the Secretary of State were supposed to be killed along with Lincoln, but those two attempts failed, and William Seward actually was the man who bought Alaska, and he was made fun of for it because everybody thought that Alaska was just a little well, not little, but a giant patch of ice that wasn't going to have anything. But Alaska had gold, it had oil, it had really good resources. So if he would have died back then, we want to have Alaska. We want to have all those resources. We want to have the state. Yeah, we have 49 states. That was known as Seward's Folly. And they paid about $7 million for it. And now it's worth a heck of a lot more than that. It's, Alaska now is known as the last great frontier. Anybody ever been to Alaska? My wife's mom was born in Alaska. Kind of an interesting little factoid for us. Um, wait, one more. And also, um, it increased the security of the presidents after this. Because if you think about it, what had happened, the reason why there really wasn't a bodyguard there is because the bodyguard decided, you know, I kind of want to watch the play. So during part of it, he moved so he could watch the play. But then he said, you know, I need a drink. I'm gonna go down to the bar, you know. The president's good. He's he's got people. He's gonna be fine. So he so, left his post, and he was the only man truly guarding Lincoln at the time. So yeah, that's that's that. Uh, one of them. One of them. Isn't it ironic too, you guys, that if you think about this happening in the 1860s? Fast forward a hundred years later, and 
a very similar situation, all, all of a different location, but JFK's assassination, where, for instance, the top wasn't actually on the car in the motorcade. A lot of people think the top being on the car would have probably saved him. Um, so, there, have you guys seen the connections? There's this like connections chart that shows the connections between Lincoln and and Kennedy. We'll have to take a look at that at some point. It's really interesting. It's it's almost eerie. A um, couple of things, and and I won't count this against your time. Uh, guys. A project like this, I can't stress enough, if at all possible, try, try to go to D.C. with us. Because you're going to go to Ford's Theater, which is where the assassination occurred. And I don't want to steal your guys' thunder. Do you guys talk much about Ford's Theater in your... Yeah, we plan to talk about it. Okay, so I won't say much about it right now, but we will go to Ford's Theater. We will go to the Peterson House. You guys mentioned Peterson House. Uh, is this the house that you went to? Yes. I think we're going to mention. Okay. Because one of the things that happened is after Lincoln was assassinated, he didn't die right away. And I'll let you guys talk about it. But they were going to actually take him in a bar. Okay. And cabinet members like we're not letting the president die in a bar. So what they did was they took him right across the street. And and if you guys talk are you guys gonna talk about the actual bed that he laid in? Uh, I don't believe we found much information. Okay. It was a tiny bed. You know Lincoln's about six five. <laughs> okay. And this bed is really no longer than this desk. In fact it's probably shorter. And they actually have it there. It's it's like a replica of it. Um, most of Ford's theater is actually the inside is replica. Um, they let it go after Lincoln's assassination. And then, of course, they rebuild it. And the only thing original in the actual theater, there's a, a picture of George Washington that's in front of the presidential box. And that's the only thing that's left. But I'll tell you, if you guys, if you go to D.C., we're going to go there. And it's just kind of really helps put things in perspective. Most of us, when we think of D.C., you think, oh, this huge city. When you go to Ford's Theater and you look at it and you're out there in the street standing there, you're like, this isn't that big. And you imagine the chaos that was going on during that time. Most people think Southerners would have loved Wilkes Booth for doing what he did. True or false? False. Because a lot of Southerners viewed this as, oh no, we just lost the Civil War. Now we're going to have even more problems because one of ours killed the president. So think of the effects that this is going to have on both the North and the South. And then we have a couple excited pages. So are we going to cook? Right. Yeah, okay. yeah, everybody get your phones ready or your computers. You're probably going to need your phones if you're using Kahoot. Yeah. It's okay. We appreciate it, Bob. You're the boss, though, so. You say phones come out, they come out. Why am I the boss? I'm thinking because you're leading the group right now, aren't you? You four?
Latin here. Alright, hey, let's hear it for this group. 